In this video, we want to find the integral of 1 over secant of x times tangent of x. Now, if this secant of x, tangent of x was in the numerator, then it'd be fairly easy. And let me just remind you of some of the integrals of the six basic trigonometric functions. These are formulas you should be familiar with. And I point out that there could be more than uh, one form of these formulas. For example, in this one here, cosecant of u, integral of cosecant of u du, that's equal to minus the natural log of absolute cosec, cosecant of u plus cotangent of u plus a constant of integration. But you can also write it in this form using properties of logs. The same thing for number or for t the tangent of u, integral of tangent of u. You can apply this negative and you can get a different look for this. But these are the main, main formulas. So we'll pause the video here if you're not familiar with these and look at these. And then we'll go to the problem here. So let me break this up this way. And this is what you should always do if you, can, if you don't see what method or technique to use. You were working with trig functions. Try to rewrite it or simplify it if possible. So I just rewrote it. So 1 over secant of x times 1 over tangent of x is the same thing that we have here for this, um, this integrand. And then always look for trig identities. Secant and cosine are reciprocals of each other. So 1 over secant of x can be written as cosine of x. Or some, sometimes you might, you might want to go the other way. You might be given cosine of x, and you might want a different look. You could write it as 1 over secant. Tangent and cotangent are reciprocals, so 1 over tangent of x can be written as cotangent of x. And then remember that cotangent of x is the same thing as cosine of x over sine of x. So this is the same thing as cosine of x over sine of x. And then we just multiply these out here. So that's the integral then of cosine squared of x over sine of x. Now standard u substitution won't work here, but again, using trig identities, I know that there's an identity that tells me that cosine squared of an angle, in this case x, plus sine squared angle is equal to 1. So taking this over, I can rewrite the cosine squared. I'll come back over here then say this is equal to the integral of, and I'm going to replace the cosine squared of x by 1 minus sine squared of x, and that's over sine of x. And this is dx here, dx here. Notice I haven't taken an integral yet. I'm just doing some algebra, some trigonometry. Then I'm going to divide through by sine of x. So 1 over sine of x, again, using an identity, 1 over sine of x is the same thing as cosecant. So that's cosecant of x. And then that's minus. And I have a sine squared over the sine x, so one factor cancels out. And that simplifies to that. So this becomes the integral of cosecant of x minus sine of x dx. And you can write this as two integrals here, or if you know the antiderivatives of these or the integrals of these, you can just go ahead and write the answer. This one, of course, we just looked at a formula for that, cosecant of x. And of course, we know the integral of sine of x is minus cosine. So if you want to, you can rewrite it. Is integral of 
plus 6x dx. And I can leave the minus out here. This will be the integral of sine of x. And we have one, I actually have more than, I have two formulas for this. I just give the first one. And of course we have, we have a formula for the integral of sine of x. So this is equal using the formulas I just went through. This is for the integral of cosecant of x. Instead of a u, this is x. Okay. Normally when you, you're given a formula in terms of u, usually the u will be a function of x. So in this case, it's just x. So this will be minus the natural log of the absolute value. And it was cosecant of u. In this case, we're dealing with x. plus cotangent of x. And the integral of sine of x was minus cosine. But then you got the negative over here in front, so that's going to make it a plus cosine of x. And then of course you have your constant of integration. So that's your formula right there. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.